Bună seara! Bine v-am găsit! Welcome to Romanian Language Step by Step with Laura. Bine ați venit la Limba Română pas cu pas cu Laura, lecția nouă. Um, Happy New Year 2020! La mulți ani 2020! Today is the uh, 7th of January, 7 ianuarie, so Romanians celebrate Saint John. Everybody with the name of Ion, Ionut, Ioana, Ionela, and so on, celebrate their name day. And this is the uh, the last of the winter celebrations. Um, we do have lots of celebrations, as you could notice, that start, the winter ones, started on the 30th of uh, November with St. Andrews, and we talked about that in the last video. Um, and we went through the Christmas and New Year's Eve. Um, yesterday we celebrated the day when Jesus was baptized, Boboteza, and today is the last day. Um, and on this occasion, I just wanted to talk a little bit about some of the Romanian traditions for Christmas and for the New Year's Eve. Um, when I talked about this to some of my students, many of them were amazed by the fact that um, Romanians are still preserving many of the traditions in spite of the fact, the old ones, I mean, in spite of the fact that we went through 50 years of communism. Um, and yeah, if you put it this way, uh, it is amazing indeed. Many of them are partially lost, maybe not, um, maybe they're not happening um with the um frequency that it used to happen before because of the you know children and young people are attracted uh, more by the internet and you know watching movies and other entertaining but in the um the villages uh in some of the villages um of especially of um of the north of Romania this is still happening and I think it's it's wonderful I was raised in a in a family with great respect for traditions and for us um singing carols in um during the Christmas Eve uh night evening and night was um not really something that we enjoyed but something considered really uh, precious and like sort of a sacred duty. So I passed on this, I tried to pass on this tradition to my daughters. Anyway, um, I think it's time to start to speak a little bit. As I was saying, during the um, Christmas, Eve, uh, Christmas Eve evening, <laughs> to say so, children um, start going um, to sing carols to the um, houses of the village people mostly even in in towns they still preserve this this um tradition and um they sing mainly about the birth of jesus um about saint mary traveling and trying to find a, um, a place to to give birth and so on and as a reward they receive uh something called kolak which is a uh, sort of bread in the shape of a um in a round shape, um, also plaited, which is handmade by the housewives um, on the day before, or even on that day, the Christmas Eve. Um, they also can receive uh, walnuts, uh, apples, pretzels, um, and if the host or the hostess are very wealthy, they can even give um, children some coins. They, that happened in the past today, more and more, this is the habit. Right. Um, later on, adults would um, would go and sing carols. There are different kinds of carols. Um, uh, until very late at night, and the next day in the morning, there is a different kind kind of carol called Stiawa. As you can see here, we have a star, and it is meant to symbolize the star that showed um, the shepherds and the three kings the, the place where Jesus was born. Um, and no matter how tired you are as a um, host, if you want your next year to be wealthy, you would receive these carol singers and repay them generously. Um, right, so this is about the um, traditions, well, some of the traditions for Christmas, which are, um, you know, sort of religious traditions. Now, about New Year's Eve, um, we have quite a lot of traditions, and they are not, of 
Christian origin. Uh, some of them are quite old, pre-Christian, I would say. Some of the ones that I would uh, like to mention is uh, are uh, Capra, Ur the goat, Ursul, and Plugushorul or Plugul. Now, Capra, about this, the goat, it, the, the, um, the researchers have different opinions. Uh, some of them think that, actually say or found proofs that in the past people would would take, a group of people would take a real goat and go to the um, houses of the villagers, of the farmers, and they would invoke, invoke with the um, help of the goat, the divine spirit, to bring um, good crops and healthy animals um, and a, a good season for the crops in the year that would come. You could see the meaning, lots of sun, plenty of sun and uh, enough rain uh, and on time. <laughs> right nowadays, not only nowadays, but um, a while after that, um, the group of people actually started um, coming from house to house without the proper goat, but having a member of the group dressed as a goat. As you can see, there's a special costume and the, um, the young man is holding a um, sort of a uh, goat head which is made of wood and the mouth is um, mobile and is manipulated by the uh, by the person you have to be very skillful because you have to um, open and shut the mouth in the rhythm of the music and the dance of the uh, goat is supposed to remind of these um, very old um dances invoking the um almighty powers <laughs> um right and today is, is you know it has purely an artistic um aim um there, there's music and they uh everybody's dancing and the goat is dancing on the rhythm um and the group has different members, different characters, uh, depending um, from region to region, and even different names. Now, this is the uh, the same. The same thing happens in the case of the tradition of the bear, Ursul, which is, however, uh, more popular in Moldova, um, northeastern Romania, uh, the region when I where I was born. And um, again, obviously, we don't have a real bear. Probably at the beginning that there was a bear um, and the, the, the bear is uh, symbolized by or embodied by a, a young man wearing a bear skin and a mask, a bear mask, a bear's head mask. And um, obviously the bear dances, uh, the bear is ill, he falls down, dies and then um, is reborn again. So um, tradition um, researchers again have different opinions. Some of them say that um, this dance is as old as the Dacians because the Dacians, as many other people uh, in the old times, uh, believed that the bear was a sacred animal. Um, others say that by rolling over the bear would purify the soil and prepare it for the uh, spring to come and for the next crops. Um, anyway, it's quite a funny, entertaining moment and it has, again, quite a lot of characters and um, the host um, should be quite a, well, uh, quite a wealthy person if he receives this group of people, obviously bringing good luck for the uh, year to come because um, they would be paid generously. Um, the last tradition I'd like to, to, to speak about is the um, plough, plugul or plugushorul. In the past, people would come with a real plough, um, which was carried by real oxen. Um, obviously, this changed, and for quite a long time, they have a miniature plow, and they've got a um, sort of an instrument which um, makes uh, the sounds that the oxen would make, the moves of the oxen. Um, if it's earlier um, in the evening of the New Year's Eve, children would go uh, with plugushorul. And later on, adults would go. Now it's it's more and more a children's tradition. Um, and when I was little, I used to learn part of Plugushorul, and the character was Trajan. 
um, who was a, a farmer and who woke up early and starting plow started plowing and then sowing and you know spreading the um, wheat seeds and getting ready for the, um, the the land the soil for the crop um, and obviously this um, story uh, is bringing wishes of good luck and good crops for the year um, the agricultural year that starts is supposed to be starting at the beginning of the new year um, that was it about three of the traditions um, in connection to the new year's eve i hope you enjoyed it if you did please like and subscribe keep in touch for the videos that are coming have a good new year un an no mai bun la revedere